cold and dark I am the hungry shark Fast and merciless But the only girl who could talk to him just... Hello again This is my 150 gallon Now Mix Reef LPS and Softy tank It is a Marineland tank uh, I bought it from PetSmart a few years ago and I drilled it for the overflows. It has a Synergy Reef overflow on it. Um, a few weeks ago I happened to have an accident and had broken my leg and then a few days after that we had a bad storm and we lost lost power for about 12 hours. Uh, I was not able to get to the tank until about 7, 8 o'clock in the morning. It had been, the power had been out for, oh, about 6 hours and we had a tank crash. Well, the corals and everything, they did, did quite okay. Um, I did lose a few heads on my LPS uh, torch corals. Uh, they are gold torches. Uh, I lost a flower pot coral that was declining anyways. And the main thing is the coralline algae on the back wall was white and is now crumbling off. I, this tank was SPS dominant. There was about 40 pieces of SPS in this tank. I did have a few frag racks in here as well. And I had a cyano outbreak, diatoms, and a few other, few other problems. Well, to resolve this tank crash, first I hooked up power to my generator and got the tank back online. I disconnected two heaters through my apex to bring up the temperature slowly because the temperature had dropped to 68, 69 degrees. And then I placed carbon in a media bag in the sump. I did not remove my old carbon because you, you have beneficial bacteria in there and I did not want to lose any more beneficial bacteria that I had in the system. At this point everything is fine. The, uh, the corals look okay. They're, they're kind of ticked off. The fish were fine. Everything was open. But after I had turned the power back on I believe it was just stagnant water from down in the sump uh, that really kind of get things going. A lot of dead bacteria in the, uh, in the pipes had came out and so I did the best I could with siphoning. I had some, some salt water on uh, in a barrel and I, I heated it up and I did a 50 gallon water change. But the main thing that helped me was Microbacter 7. Focus in. I dosed about 40 mils to this 150 gallon tank. It's probably about 170 gallons total. And baker's yeast, it, what it does is let your, more or less your tank is cycling when you lose all this bacteria. And it helps with the imbalance of bacteria, uh, removing diatoms and um, 
helps with the bacterial in infection that you would actually have. Uh, I have not found any evidence that it helps with cyanobacteria. For that, I use cyanoclean. The sand bed was covered. The, the lock lines were covered. I had some on the rocks and a lot in the sump. And within two weeks, cyanoclean by Zeovit had removed most of it. So within two weeks, my coralline algae is growing back, but now I have to remove this old al uh, this old coralline algae. It has uh, completely died off the old coralline. Um, I'll pick the camera up and show you. that I, I have some zoanthids glued onto the back wall and you see the new stuff growing in those are the dead heads on my torches I lost a couple heads on this frog spine the hammer corals were unaffected My clam was unaffected. What I also did was I wet skimmed and changed filter socks about twice a day to remove any of this stuff. You see here there's so there's a piece of that coralline that had flaked off there. But what I'm doing is I'm trying to scrape it off little by a little at a time and catch it with a net. I don't have the light on to my refugium. There's plenty of algae in there. I an Ecotech pump. There is my auto top off and what my dosing is a bubble magnus um, also you need to pay close attention to your your alkalinity since the coralline died off you're going to have to lower your alkalinity and calcium boost. Really bummed out about this, but I had several pieces of SBS in here, like I said. We have brought down buckets of salt water from the, uh, the, the house tank. And I removed them and I acclimated them into the uh, the tanks upstairs. You know, they're very crowded right now. I did leave a few, well, one millipora behind uh, just to see how it, it would do. And it'll focus. Focus. But anyways, you can see it's very dead. But my uptake of alkalinity and calcium has increased over the last two weeks. About every three days, I have to bump it up about five mils. I had to almost cut my alkalinity and calcium intake down by probably a good 30%. It, it was knocked way back. 
that, that the whole back wall was covered with portaline algae. Uh, now I'll just let the zoanthids grow in and then I'll continue to let the portaline algae to grow. Uh, another thing about portaline algae, I've seen several people clean the back of their tanks all at once, removing the coralline algae. Well, I have seen with a few reefers that this actually will crash your tank as well. Um, I think it's more or less due to alkalinity calcium change when you scrape that off, they're no longer taking, taking in the alkalinity and calcium as it was previously. I'll do a little quick tour of the tank real quick now with the different corals. And I do have this guy, he's still pretty ticked off. He's he's closed up pretty well. It's a Wilsophilia. Has some achans. Of course the clam. That Zoa just a week ago was just two polyps and it has oh I'd, I'd say at least 12 polyps that go around there now a big hulkzilla rock purple torch i have some uh, more acans around here more zoas this was all sps i moved this around there's a recordia mushroom Gotta focus in I turned up the white so the tank wouldn't be quite so blue. This is where I chopped it, all the SPS out right here. I put an A-can there, two over here, st stuck in some, some zoas or zoos. Got one little green uh, toxic pally there. I put some Hulkzilla's on the back wall. There's a little pally there. I'm trying to zoom in there. There it goes. You see the coralline is, is growing back in and actually even growing back over this dead stuff. I'll zoom in on that. Oh, doing this, I've actually it actually has created another head already. It's only been in here a week. There's my torches. Got Samson in there in the back. This toxic uh, toadstool, which it'd be a lot more fluorescent for the bluer lights, it's probably the most sensitive coral in this tank at this moment. It, if the water parameters are off just a little bit, he closes up and he, shed, he starts shedding his skin. Uh, frog spawn, a neon hammer, purple hammer, some more zoas. We even stuck this little guy back there. He's a type of encrusting coral. Not quite sure what he is. I actually found him underneath a rock. And I don't even remember putting this in my tank. So this big guy, he was completely unaffected. The green star polyps are kind of closed up right now. They've been doing good. Good size. Good size Duncan colony. More A cans. I have about 15 A can colonies in here. And I got a little bubble coral hidden back there in the back. Not a SPS dominant tank anymore, but. Still very pleasurable here in the office. I'll tell you another product that's real. But watch. 
which I really like from Zeobit, that even if you do not run a Zeobit system, it works really well with sponges. See the sponges there. And you see it's coralline. The coralline on the rocks were really not affected. But this sponge power, it is two drops per 25 gallons every other day. It works wonderful. Right there is a zoa colony with a fungia plate growing in it. I'll cut him out once he gets a little bigger. Frag him on a rock. Well, I thank you for watching the video. Comment, like, and subscribe. Thank you very much.